Governor, Mr. Vice President, Senator, members of the Congress, members of the military, ladies and gentlemen. For more than three years, I've spoken about uh, the new frontier. This is not a partisan term, and it's not the exclusive property of Republicans or Democrats. It refers instead to this nation's place in history, to the fact that we do stand on the edge of a great new era, filled with both crisis and opportunity, an era to be characterized by achievement and by challenge. It is an area which calls for action and for the best efforts of all those who would test the unknown and the uncertain in every phase of human endeavor. It is a time for pathfinders and pioneers. I have come to Texas today to salute an outstanding group of pioneers. The man who manned the Brooks Air Force Base School of Aerospace Medicine and the Aerospace Medical Center. Next month, when the United States of America fires the largest booster in the history of the world into space for the first time, giving us the lead, fires the largest payroll, payload into space, giving us the lead. It will be the largest payroll, too. <laughs> Who should know that better than Houston? <laughs> In 1990, your sons, daughters, grandsons, and grandchildren will be applying to the colleges of this state in a number three times what they do today. Our airports will serve five times as many passenger miles. We will need housing for 100 million more people and many times more doctors and engineers and technicians than we are presently producing. That is why we're trying to do more in these areas. As in the 30s, Albert Thomas and Franklin Roosevelt and others did those things which make it possible for not only Texas but the entire United States to prosper and grow as we do in the 1960s. In 1990, the age of space will be entering its second phase. And our hopes in it to preserve the peace, to make sure that in this great new sea, as on Earth, the United States is second to none. We would like to live uh, as we once lived, but history will not permit it. The communist balance of power is still uh, strong. The balance of power is still on the side of freedom. We are still the keystone and the arch of freedom, and I think we'll continue to do as we have done in our past, our duty. I'm confident, as I look uh, to the future, that our chances for security, our chances for peace, are better than they've been in the past. And the reason is because we're stronger. And with that strength is a determination to not only maintain the peace, but also the vital interests of the United States. To that great cause, Texas and the United States are committed. Thank you. On the morning of Thursday, November 21st, 1963, President Kennedy had breakfast with his children. He said goodbye to his daughter Carolyn when she left for school at 9.15. President Kennedy arrived at his office for the last time at 9.55. The president left the White House for the last time at 10.50 a.m. He flew to Andrews Air Force Base, where he and the First Lady departed for San Antonio, Texas. John Jr. accompanied them to the airport. Once in Texas, he was at the dedication of the Aerospace Medical Health Center, Brooks Air Force Base. He then went to Houston. There he made brief remarks to the League of United Latin American Citizens at the Rice Hotel. He then addressed a dinner in honor of Representative Albert Thomas. Some of that speech was just heard. The President and First Lady then traveled to Fort Worth, where they stayed at the Texas Hotel. He had speeches set for Fort Worth and Dallas the next day. In world news, Robert Stroud, 
the Birdman of Alcatraz, died while incarcerated in Springfield, Missouri. In Japan's general election, the Liberal Democratic Party retained a majority in the Shugin, while India began its space program with the launching of a rocket at the far south end of the Indian subcontinent. And by the time the president went to sleep, it was the 22nd in the UK. That day, the Beatles released their second studio album, With the Beatles. Produced by George Martin, it featured eight original compositions and six covers. The famous black and white portrait on the cover with Ringo underneath John, George, and Paul was widely copied afterwards. <laughs> 